The Memory Viewer module in OS Forensics allows investigators to preview live memory, acquire full or process specific memory captures, and even analyze these memory captures. Once you open the Memory Viewer module, you will notice there are two tabs labeled Live Analysis and Static Analysis. When performing a live analysis on a running target with an OSF USB, the memory details of all processes currently running on the system is displayed in a task manager like view. Unlike non volatile disk, which can be analyzed statically, memory contents, or RAM, can only be analyzed while the system is live. Furthermore, it is possible that potentially implicating evidence exists only in the system's physical memory without any traces left on the actual physical disk. This matter is complicated further if the data only exists in memory for a brief period of time. In the Live Analysis tab, you will see all running processes on the machine, in addition to 47 columns of metadata related to those processes, plus five more tabs of additional information such as the process info, handles, modules, memory space, and memory layout. In this slide, you can see the digitally signed column is highlighted. This column lets investigators know whether that particular process is digitally signed by a creator or manufacturer. In many cases, malware and computer viruses usually would not contain a valid digital signature. However, over the last few years, there has been a rise in stealthy malware who is using stolen digitally signed certificates from leg legitimate sources in order to appear like a normal program. Some research conducted a few years ago by a cybersecurity institute showed that stolen digitally signed certificates were readily available on the dark web for upwards of $1,500. So you can't always assume that just because a process is signed that it couldn't be malware. Conversely, if a process isn't signed, that certainly doesn't mean it is malware either. The tabs at the bottom provide different information for any selected processes running and listed above. The process info shows details of the application whose process was created. When dealing with memory, a handle is a unique identifier for an object managed by Windows. It's like a pointer, but not a pointer in the sense that it's not an address that could be dereferenced by user code to gain access to some data. Instead, a handle is to be passed to a set of functions that can perform actions on the object which the handle identifies. So at the most basic level, think of a handle as a pointer to a pointer. Next is the Modules tab, which in this slide is showing DLLs that are loaded by the Explorer.exe process. This view shows the list of modules loaded by the process, including the location and process memory and the file path of the module. This view shows the process memory allocation within its virtual address space. Double clicking on a memory section opens the internal viewer. Right clicking on a memory section allows the user to dump the memory contents into a file. The memory sections can also be filtered based on different criteria. Double clicking on a memory section opens the internal viewer. You can then extract strings and perform other analysis from within the internal viewer. The memory sections can also be filtered based on the following criteria as laid out here in this slide. Here we can see an example of double clicking a memory space address from the explorer.exe process. The lower right hand of the screen shows the filtering options we just looked at. In the final tab labeled memory layout, this shows a graphical layout of the allocated memory sections within the process's virtual address space. So let's look at how to create a memory image also known as a memory dump, a RAM dump, a RAM image, and other names. No matter what you call it, OS Forensics gives you several unique and useful options for collecting RAM. While in the memory viewer module, 
OS Forensics offers users a few approaches to memory capture. You can either collect a full memory acquisition or you can collect what we call a process specific memory image which allows you to create a binary dump or a particular process or processes. This option could be useful if you needed to target specific processes in memory in your analysis or as an alternative to a full memory image in the event of storage space or time issues. For example, if you were at a business and processing a server with 128 gigabytes of RAM, you may not have the time or resources to acquire that entire 128 gigabytes of memory. In situations like that, the process specific image acquisition option may be a more viable option. To create a standard full memory dump image from the memory viewer modules, the user simply has to click on the dump physical memory button as shown here in this slide. You will be prompted to name the resulting file and where to send it. You should always save the memory dump back to your OS Forensics USB or an additional external device and certainly not to the target system. A few things to consider if you will be collecting memory images. One, make sure you are using a good quality high read-write speed USB device and two, that it is at least USB 3 or above. Here's a look at how to obtain a process specific memory capture and shows you your two options for the output. You can either choose the process memory snapshot option which will create a separate binary memory image file for each of the checkmarked processes. The other option is to combine process memory as a single file which will write all of your checkmarked processes into one single binary image file. So we looked at how simple and effective it is to use OSF for your memory acquisition needs and live analysis needs. So let's look at a few simple ways you can use OSF to analyze a memory image. To do, to do this, we'll need to click on the static analysis tab and point OS Forensics to the memory dump file. This slide highlights the view and extract strings buttons, which opens the memory image in the OSF file viewer for rapid string extraction and searching functionality. First, let's get an overview of the three main methods of analyzing a memory image in OS Forensics. You can simply carve the image for known file types using the, the deleted file search module in OS Forensics, which we'll cover in depth later in the course. You can also perform string extraction and searching, which we just mentioned in the last slide. And you can also perform additional memory analysis using our Volatility Workbench tool, which we'll discuss in greater detail in a few slides. Volatility Workbench is our free, open source, front end GUI for the popular command line memory tool, Volatility. We'll also discuss this later in the course, but be aware analysis with Volatility Workbench requires a full memory image and not a process specific image. The first two options, however, can be used with any type of memory capture. Here's a closer look at the string extraction feature. After clicking on the view and extract strings button, the OSF file viewer opens the memory image under the hex string viewer tab. Once you press the extract button, OSF will rip through the memory file, pulling out all strings and presenting them in a nice viewing pane and broken down by line item. This is done in real time during the extraction. One of the other main functions of this, which makes this such an incredible feature that can be used to quickly is that the user can then uh, use our pre-built filter presets to quickly locate specific types of artifacts as shown here. Users can choose to display everything that looks like a file name, an email, URL, web-based artifacts, GUIDs, which are globally unique identifiers, IP addresses, dates, phone numbers, credit card numbers, BitLocker recovery keys, and even a, uh, a scan the strings against a user provided or pre-built word list. Also worth mentioning is that this feature is also great for analyzing other file types, not just memory images. You could use this for analyzing the page file.sys or the hyperfill.sys 
or even for some basic analysis of an executable file, for example. If you're wondering what the Analyze button does, this will call the Volatility Workbench app to open, which is part of the installer package when installing OS Forensics. Volatility Workbench is a graphical user interface for the Volatility tool. Volatility, again, is a command line memory analysis and forensics tool for extracting artifacts from memory dumps. Volatility Workbench is our free, open source uh, tool and runs in Windows. It integrates with Volatility 3 and provides several advantages over the command line version, including no need to remember command line parameters, storage of the operating system profile, the KDBG address and process list with the memory dump in a CFG or config file. When a memory image is loaded, this saves a lot of time and avoids the frustration of not knowing the correct profile to select. And it's much simpler to copy and paste the returned data. It's simpler printing of paper copies through right-click options simpler saving of the dumped information to a file on disk, drop-down list of available commands and a short description of what the command line does allows you to not have to enter those commands or know those commands uh, by memory, time stamping of the commands when they're executed, and auto-loading the first dump file found in the current folder. Volatility Workbench will open in a new window as it technically is a separate application. You may have to repoint it to your memory image to load it for processing. Once a full memory image has been loaded and the correct OS profile has been set, the pre-built list of commands or plugins becomes available for you to choose from, which eliminates the need for the user to remember command line parameters. Also, the output can be easily saved as a report, which can be added to your OS forensics case. Here we see an example of some of the available volatility commands which you can see are broken down into categories. Once a command is chosen, you will see a short description of that command in the description box. You will also see a green progress bar advance as volatility is processing the command in the background. Depending on the command chosen and the size of the memory image, this can take several minutes. Here we see the output of a completed scan. The PS list command was used, which produces a list of all processes that were currently running on the machine when the memory image was acquired. You can then create a simple report of the scan results by clicking the Save to File button. You can then easily import that standalone report into OS Forensics by going to the Manage Case module, clicking on the Add External Report button. You will then simply point to the volatility output file, give it a title and a few brief notes if you wish, and click OK. That's all there is to it. As another option, you could also add the file to the report by using the Attachment button under the Add to Case section.